caravan vlogging. Hi, welcome to the vlog. Now, this vlog has taken, I, I just can't get started on this vlog. I, I normally, I just sit here and as you know, I just waffle away and I, I generally have subjects that I want to talk about. But this one, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a general update of kind of where we are with the car and, you know, everything else with that. So it's been a reasonably stressful time for me, one way or another. Um, obviously, we had the car stolen and uh, our buddy Ian from Foot of Lover Caravans was taken seriously all a couple of weeks ago, which it kind of puts a lot of things in perspective. Um, but also, it's extremely stressful and not just for us as we're friends but I mean for his his wife Claire and their son Mike as well and, and Josh who lives at home um, you know uh, heart goes out to them and I've been in reasonably regular contact with Claire I don't really want to badger her every day but just so you know Claire if you're watching you know you're in our thoughts all the time and we're constantly talking about you and Ian and, and how things are going and hope you know you're just trying to second guess everything but um, from what I can gather, he's doing reasonably well. There is some progress. I don't. I think the important thing, from what I can gather, is he's not. He's not going backwards. I don't think he's awake yet and not completely communicating. But I mean, it's, I think it's a long, a long recovery there, unfortunately. But anyway, just so you know, Claire, we are thinking of you. Now, Ian is a. Uh, absolutely diamond i mean claire's lovely as well i mean i always we always joke that claire's the talent of for the love of caravans and in some ways she is which ian doesn't like one eye and so i mean lovely couple and ian I, if you've watched any of my vlogs from the nec and probably any of ian's as well you'll you'll know that um you know we go there and we meet up there and i basically spend the whole day walking around with ian that we don't really do much caravan material as you'll know it's just us chatting really and I had a bit of a laugh this year actually because because of the like the caravan writing the caravan off uh, the subs for our channel have grown a reasonable amount i mean really artificially high i guess for the kind of content i'm putting out but um people love a love a a, a bit of a drama right so the caravan was the caravan being written off was maybe got us 1500 subs i don't know so of course the more subs you have the more times you get recognized that the places like the NEC I mean it's you know and, and bless Ian he was like he was walking around with me and he's like how many people are going to say hello to you how many? and of course Ian being Ian is that somebody would stop me to have a chat they'd probably know Ian's channel list but they'd be subscribing to my own and Ian was like talking to them more than I was so I mean what a lovely bloke I mean we have, really have our fingers crossed and we're really hoping that you know, things are, are going to improve soon and I'm, I'm hopeful they will. I mean if you know Ian or watch his channel or anything just you know give him a, a bit of a thought and we've been on holiday a couple of times with him I think a couple of times anyway we, we met him in in Cornwall we, uh, Ian's favourite site I think is uh, Turethit Farm is it called actually this year they're booked to go to Bunnery which I know he's really excited about so you know I don't I mean you got to look at it recently I'm not sure he's going to make it this year but I'm sure he will get there I'm sure he's a fighter, and uh, he, you know, if there's you know, if there's anything in in his power to get that recovery going faster, I know he'll be there fighting. So, but I mean, with our help and encouragement, I'm sure he'll do it. Looking forward to um, when you're communicating again. So that's that. So I just really want. It's, this is really awkward for me to do. I'm not really an emotional type of guy like that. So, but I wanted to say something. Um, I did kind of briefly message Claire just to say I think a few people are maybe going to say a few words um about Ian um and we you know we're all just all behind you Claire and and Ian and, and Mike as well and Josh and and the dogs I suppose but you know if there's anything we can do just shout out I'm not sure there is anything we can do we're like 200 miles away or whatever but you know we know where we are I don't want to bother you with constant How's he doing? How's he doing? But um, hopefully, when he recovers a, you know, when he recovers a bit more and he's communicating, we can arrange to pop up and see him. I'm sure he'll love that. <laughs> um, that's so that's that. That's, really, that's all I wanted to say about that. Really, the hopefully, I'm sure it will. It's a you know, it's a slow process. It's, it's got to be a slow recovery, isn't it? But forward steps. Pigeon steps, we'll get there. 
In other news, so the car, you'll know from my last vlog that we got the GLE eventually, after a bit of a stressful um, couple of weeks really. Um, <coughs> so where are we? I've got some improved security going on the car, has gone on the car. We're just waiting for the tow bar now. Um, as our next week, next Wednesday, or this the Wednesday coming, I think. Not that I, I know it's Wednesday. Now I went with Witter tow bars. I think they're one of the sort of biggest tow bar fitters. There, there were a couple locally to us where I could go to get it fitted, but it's it maybe two two hours. I did it when we first started caravanning. I had a fixed. I mean, I didn't know really know the better side of fixed flange, whatever they call it, a fixed tow bar. And if you've ever had a fixed tow bar before with a hatchback estate or whatever, you know that every time you walk around the back of the car, you smash your shin on it. You'd, I mean, it's guaranteed you will 100%, and sure enough, I did. Um, so I've gone for a detachable Westphalia. Interesting conversations on Twitter and with a friend of mine actually who's got a Westphalia tow bar. He said there's no point for the breakaway cable to hook onto so you have to hook it around the tow bar itself now there's no other way of doing it now i think the story goes that if you if it's a detachable tow bar then it could of course come off as you're driving along right but i mean these things are designed not to do that it's like these old thing this whole thing about checking your wheel nuts every time you use the caravan i mean you can of course but is it just is it worrying needlessly like you know you're going to worry needlessly that your tow bar is going to fall off with the breakaway cable attached to it so the caravan i mean you know so the idea is you you fit the breakaway cable to not to the tow bar that can fall off but to the bodywork i mean what if the the whole assembly fell off do you know what i mean it's just like come on so i'm going to check it out when i get it and I'll update you. So it should have some sort of little eyelet that the the um, the caribou clip, is that what it's called, on the breakaway cable. Oh, it's technology. I mean, this is what you tune in for. Caravan technology. Caravan technology talk. So I'll update you as to what, what the tow bar's like when I get it. I'll maybe vlog it. I'm not going to film the guy fitting it. I mean, I think he's got to take the bumper off and... I'd imagine it was stressful enough anyway without me going, hey, mate, can I film you? Do the tow bar. What's your name? Not everybody likes it. I know some other people do stuff like that, but not really me. So that's so tow bar fit. So we've been kind of getting stuff together for the France trip because it's like about seven weeks away now that we go. So um, if you've been to France or look to go into France, you'll know there's a load of kind of regulatory, should I call it that, stuff you need to, like for instance, you need to carry high-vis jackets, one for each passenger in the car, so if you break down, you, you've got to put the high-vis jacket on. You have to have spare bulbs. Um, now, I'm not sure, but I think the caravan and the car are all LED lights, so me having a spare set of bulbs isn't going to help. I mean, high-vis jackets are really it's to nothing, and the, and the, the like, you know, but it all adds up because I've had to buy a new sat nav as well, a replacement sat nav. Um, what else did I have to get? Um, so some other the motor mover controller, you had to get one of those. I mean, the insurance company paid for those, so that's not so bad, but things like the breath, you know, I mean, uh, did you keep an inventory of your car? I don't, it's only when I mean, I noticed that the air pump that I blow the tires up with, the cordless air pump, um, was in the boot as well, so I've had to buy another one of those. Obviously, the claim had been closed, so I can't claim that, but there you go. So you're in the process of buying all that kind of stuff now. Now, I'm checking the COVID regulations. Now, if anyone's been to France, if you wouldn't mind commenting down below, because I'm reading that if you're not fully vaccinated, and I'll go into that in a second, if you're not fully, fully vaccinated, you have to get a PCR test from within 72 hours of going and sign some sort of declaration thing saying promise I haven't got COVID. Now, what fully vaccinated means is, now it's a little bit complicated, it's not just the two jabs, it's two jabs and the booster, but you've got to have had the booster within nine months of you going. So I think a lot of people would have had double jabs and booster and maybe nine months has passed 
So I don't, I'm not going to get another jab just because um, France don't consider me fully vaccinated if I don't have that jab within nine, nine, nine months of having it previously. So like I said, we've booked the ferry. That's all done and dusted, so we're all ready to go now. Once I've got the tow buffered, um, I'm going to test, give it a test. See, we've had to cancel a couple of um, breaks, a couple of short weekends, short weekends, a couple of weekends away that we had reasonably locally. We had to cancel those because they're not having, well, one not having a tow car and now have a tow car but no tow bar. My advice, don't get your car stolen. So I mentioned last week or the last vlog about the personal number plate. So this is what happens with a personal number plate is you have to inform the DVLA. So there's this thing that you've got to be really careful about. Well, you haven't actually, but if you read the documentation, you have to be careful about this, the way you do this. So it says... Before you tell the DVLA that a car's been stolen, even though the police have told them, right, so they know it's a stolen car, but before you tell them it's stolen, you have to put your private number plate on retention. Remember, it's this £80 that I had to go to the post office for, cash only, plus £10. Uh, now, uh, put, I, had to, I had to, you could only pay for a cheque or a postal order. I don't have a chequebook, so I went to get a postal order. You can only buy a postal order using cash and they charge you £10 to issue the postal order. And also then you have to pound top of that to post it. So, I mean, this is just to get a retention certificate to say, I own the number plate and I can put it on my next car. Now, the reason you do that is that, like, if you sell it privately, like, so when you sell the car, well, when your car's stolen, you're basically selling it to the insurance, although obviously they're not getting a car because it's been stolen. But if it turns up tomorrow, then it's their property, not mine. And of course, the number plate would go with it unless I put it on retention. Now, so I don't think the way it works is, I thought anyway, you put it on retention. I've got a letter from DVLA saying you now own the number plate. But I can't put it on the new car for six months. Uh, so until October. Now, the reason that they say that is, is because it interferes with the police ability to spot stolen cars so think about that for a minute so somebody's going to steal my car and keep the number plates on it and drive around i don't think so i mean they're going to take the number plates off before they've got two miles away and put another couple of so what so i then i then drive around in a car that's got my number plates on that is registered with a dvla they then look at the number plate and go oh it's a gray gle that's good so what, I don't understand the problem. I don't see why. Small thing, I know, but little things like that bug you, don't they? Because, sh anyway, shouldn't, anyway, I've got to wait six months before I put the number plate on. Right, just, uh, you can see all that stuff's magically appeared. Oh, magic, there's a, anyway, um, I've had to just run in the house and get that because that's something I wanted to talk about. Now, I don't generally contact companies to do product reviews. Uh, most of the stuff I review I've bought myself and the way I claw a little bit back is by putting the Amazon affiliate links at the bottom you know so maybe I'll buy something for 50 quid and I might get two pound back on the <laughs> you don't care about that do you anyway just to let you know uh, I'm not a millionaire honest I'm not a millionaire vlogger so yeah stuff blurry in the background I was con contacted by a company called Caravan Magic uh, they do cleaning stuff for the caravan. Uh, they asked me if I, if I wouldn't mind reviewing something. And it was just after I'd cleaned the caravan. So I said, look, you know, I've just cleaned the caravan. I don't know when I'm next going to clean it. I'll certainly clean it before I go on holiday. And then the car got stolen. And everything got, uh, everything's gone just a bit pear-shaped as far as caravaning goes. So I've had this sitting in my office for some time. So um, caravan, the old caravan magic. Is this going to clean? Caravan magic? Yeah. So they do a whole range of stuff. Now, I don't know what it's like yet, but that was a multi-wash black streak remover. Now, really, I wasn't, I didn't know what they'd send me, so thanks very much for sending all this, and I will try it all out. Spot wax finisher. No streaks or scratches. Disinfectant wipes for the inside of the caravan. 
this looks a bit like orange juice actually i think if you've got kids you need to, i mean it has got a a top that you need to push down you know it's like a medicine thing it, you can't just undo it uh, this is the wash wizard concentrated luxury detergent shampoo designed to leave lasting protective shine high shine dirt repellent finish there you go so i will endeavor to review the caravan magic stuff as soon as i can so sorry guys if you're watching i haven't managed to do it yet i know i've had it for probably a couple of months maybe it's just one of those things i was even i'm even i was even going to try to wash the car with it um fortunately i didn't wash the car before it got stolen because it would have looked fantastic i'm sure just as they nicked it thanks for watching see you in the next one doesn't smell like orange juice <coughs> not nasty smell though looking forward to using it but I have to say I don't particularly enjoy washing the caravan I know some people do kills 99.9% .9 germs including coronavirus heard it here first actually it does look really good stuff and they've sound like seem like very nice people when they mailed me well that smells nice so based on the smell review buy some <laughs> black streak remover Not bad. Nice bottles, nice uh, quality.